Cool. Well, I thought since it's <clears throat> Friday that we would uh, we'd start with a, a little fun this morning. So I want to take a little trip back to the past. And since you have uh, <laughs> dress rehearsal coming up tonight, that is dress rehearsal uh, somewhere around 1995, I believe. And so you might recognize a few people in that picture. So um, if you look closely around there, I'm in the back middle there and uh, Mr. Haynes there in the foreground. Looking a little, uh, hair was a little darker then, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I didn't have as many years with the campers then. And uh, now, guys, you, you're going to be thankful for this next picture because back in the day for the concert, we didn't wear white shirts. Oops, hang on. All right. I thought I was over that. Hmm. Hmm. There we go. All right, let me go back one now. Back in the day, we wore blue shirts. Oh, so, yeah. Except, so, except for one or two. So there's always a, always a few in each crowd. And then this is a train ride to Philadelphia. And you probably should recognize at least three people in that picture. So, yeah, good, real good looking guy on the left there with those nice round glasses. Um, and you might notice Miss Brooks in the middle. And um, I'm not... I, Amy, I don't know Amy's last name. It used to be Christmas. But uh, that's your clarinet teacher there on the right. So, Halteman. Halteman. All right. So anyway, just a little trip uh, to the past this morning. I thought you guys might, might enjoy that. Well, we've been talking about living for the glory of God this week. And as we continue to do that this morning, we think about yesterday, talking about tuning our hearts to God's heart. And this morning... I want to, to talk about something that tuning your heart to God's heart will not do. Tuning your heart to God's heart will not prevent you from going through difficult circumstances in life. I want to talk about storms this morning. Because in life, we all face storms. We all face difficulties. And being a follower of Christ, loving Jesus, and living for Him does not exempt you from going through difficult times. I, I wish that it did. Because I don't like hard things. I don't like difficult days. I don't particularly like storms. But God has ordained that we would go through trials and tribulations. And if we're going to live for the glory of God, if we're going to live in a way that brings honor and glory and praise to our Creator, we need to learn how to handle and face and navigate our way through the storms of life. We need to develop a faith that's capable of meeting and mastering the storms that life will bring. Life on, on earth is filled with pain, it's filled with hurt, and it's filled with trouble. Thousands of years ago, Job said this. He said, man born of woman is few days and full of trouble. Uh, the founder of my school, I went to Liberty University, and Dr. Jerry Falwell would speak to the students very often. And, and he would get up and, and he would say something that I didn't like, but I knew it was true. And he would look at us and he'd say, you know, in life, you're going to have more bad days than good days. And you need to learn how to handle those days and how to live through those days. Jesus said that in this life, we would face trials and tribulation. Life is filled with problems. It's filled with pain. It's filled of storms of all kinds. Whether it's the death of somebody that we love, whether it's times where we hurt, sometimes the storms are physical. We face disease or challenges physically. Sometimes it's an injury, sometimes it's an emotional storm that we go through because of the pain or the hurt that we've experienced. Sometimes it's a family storm as you go through a difficult issue in your family. There's all kinds of storms in life, problems, pain, hurt, and sometimes they seem to overwhelm us like a tidal wave and our hearts are hurting and grieving. And maybe you came here to camp in the midst of a storm. Maybe there's a storm raging back home and this has been a great week for you to kind of get out of that for a little while, but you know whether it's this weekend when you go home or next weekend or the following that you're going to go back into a storm. For some of you, you're, you're walking through that now. For others of us, storms are coming. It's a reality of life. They're unavoidable, they're unpredictable, and they can be extreme. And so the question and the challenge I want to put before us this morning is, how can we live for the glory of God 
in the midst of the storms. How do we do that? How do we develop a faith that's capable of meeting and mastering the storms of life. I want us to consider the life of Paul this morning because Paul was somebody who was really, really well acquainted with storms in life, all kinds of storms. And, and we're in particular, we're going to, in a few moments, kind of narrow down on, on a storm that he went through, a physical storm. But from that, I want to draw some parallels to the storms of life that we face. But I just want you to, to check this out as Paul talks about some of what he went through in life. In 2 Corinthians 11, verse 24, Paul said, Five times I received at the hands of the Jews 40 lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness. You guys getting the idea? Paul lived a dangerous life. He said there was danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, in hunger and in thirst, often without food and cold and exposure. Paul was familiar with the storms of life. And even though Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus and had an encounter with God that changed not only his life, but his destiny, it changed his mission and it changed his future and his eternity. And Paul went from one who persecuted the church to one who loved God with all of his heart and his mind and his soul. He said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And he gave his life to spreading the gospel around the world and taking the gospel to the Gentiles. And you might step back and think, well, if someone dedicates their life so greatly to God like that, then surely God will protect them. Surely God will make it easy for them. Surely he won't let anything bad happen to them. But as we know, God allowed Paul to go through many many storms. But I want you to know that God had a purpose in each and every one of them. And in the storms that you face in life, God has a purpose in each one of them. I want you to take your Bible this morning and turn to Acts 27. Acts 27, next to the last chapter in the book of Acts. And, and just for a few moments, I want to work through uh, a story in the life of Paul that Luke records for us. And, and just sort of look at this situation that Paul was in. And, and from it, I want to draw some parallels to the storms that we go through. And I also want us to see some principles that Paul used to guide him through the storms of life. So Acts chapter 27. Hmm. And uh, we're going to begin in uh, verse 13 in just a moment. But just to set things up for you, um, Paul has um, been imprisoned by his own people. And he has appealed to Caesar. And so he is being taken to Rome to stand trial. Now, they get on a ship and, and they're partway through the journey when they experience some hardship and difficulties. And they, in this point in Acts chapter 27, we're going to begin in verse 13, they're on the island of Crete in the middle of the Mediterranean. And Paul warns those that are running the ship. He says, we should not leave this port now. Winter was coming. Storms were coming. And Paul says, I am afraid. I believe that if we take this journey that it will not go well. Well, of course, they didn't listen to Paul. And they went and continued on the journey. So beginning in, in verse 13 of Acts 27, we're picking up in the middle of Paul's voyage across the Mediterranean. And it says, Now when the south wind blew gently, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, they weighed the anchor and sailed along Crete close to the shore. Now I just want us to stop there for a second. It says, When a light wind was blowing. The conditions were favorable. Everything looked good. You ever have those moments in life? where everything just seems to kind of come together, you're healthy, things are clicking, school's going well, your relationship with your mom and dad's good, you're at Chehi, right? You ever had those days, those moments, right? Where everything's good. Anybody ever have that day, that moment? All right, I hope you have. All right, we all have those times in life where everything seems like it's finally clicked, it's finally fit together. Life is good. But life changes quickly, doesn't it? Look in verse 14. It says, but soon a tempestuous wind called a nor'easter. If you have the King James, it'll say Eurocliden. But it was just a strong storm. And it struck down from the land. And when the ship was caught, it could not face the wind. And we gave way to it and were driven along. The weather changed abruptly. And life changes abruptly, doesn't it? One telephone call can change your life forever. 
bad news from the doctor, a broken relationship, a hurt or a pain that all of a sudden jumps into our life. Life can change in an instant. I know many of you have already experienced that. And if you live long enough, you will experience that. And the situation in Paul's life is about to go from bad to worse. Look at verse 16. Running under the lee of the small island of Cauda, we managed with difficulty to secure the ship's boat. After hoisting it up, they used the supports to undergird the ship. Then fearing they would run aground on Sirtis, they lowered the gear, and thus they were driven along. And since we were violently storm-tossed, they began the next day to jettison the cargo. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their hands. When neither the sun nor the stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. You know, sometimes the storms of life make us feel hopeless, don't they? Have you ever had a situation that just left you feeling hopeless? Like there was no way through and no way out, no way that you were going to be able to overcome the circumstances that you were in. Paul and his shipmates were in a hopeless situation. So let's look at what Paul does and how Paul responds. Look at verse 21. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me. Have you ever said that? All right, let me turn that question around. How many of you have a mom or dad who has ever said that to you? All right. I want to ask you guys that are married how many times your wife has said that. <laughs> but I know it's many. He says, you should have listened to me and not set sail from Crete and incurred this injury and loss. Yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship, for this very night in whom I worship. So do not be afraid. He said, do not be afraid, Paul, for you will stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all, those who sail with me, to be saved. Verse 25. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God. Literally, I believe God. And that it will be exactly as I've been told. But we must run aground on some island. Paul's perspective in the middle of the storm was radically changed when an angel appears to him and promises him, Paul, you're going to get through this. And I love what it says there about Paul in verse 25. Look closely at verse 25 there. Paul said, I have faith in God. Literally, I believe God. Did you know that there's a difference from believing in God to believing God? You see, a lot of people believe in God, but few believe God. Believe in God is when we take His promises literally and trust Him. Despite Paul's assurances, the, the crew was terrified still that they were going to die. As you read on in verses 27 through 29, they are desperate. It says, when the 14th night had come, as we were being driven across the Adriatic Sea, about midnight the sailors suspected that they were nearing land, so they took a sounding and found 20 fathoms, a fathom six feet, so you guys can do the math, it was 120 feet deep. They checked a little while later and it was only 15 fathoms. And so in verse 20 it says, Fearing that we might run aground, they let out four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. Have you ever been there? Four anchors out the back of the ship praying for daylight. They were desperate and hopeless. Jesus does not always spare his children from storms. Sometimes Jesus even sent his disciples into a storm. God will not always spare you from trials and difficulties. In fact, Jesus said in this life you'll have what? Trials and tribulations. There's three things that I want to encourage you to remember as you navigate the storms of life. Three things I want to give you this morning from this text and from God's Word that I think will help you and encourage you. Number one, as we think about three things to remember, num number one is this, remember who God is. Remember who God is. No matter what happens in your life, no matter what you're going through, no matter what storms you may be having to navigate through, always remember this, God 
hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God never changes. And not only does He never change, but He cares about you. Psalm 116 verse 5 says this, The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Isn't that an amazing thought? You know, we, we spent a little time this week talking about how big God is, how vast He is, the fact that our very galaxy, which is massive, is but a speck on the radar of the universe, and yet God measures it all with His hand, this massive, great, big, almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, holy God of the universe is a God who cares about you and about me. He is a God who is full of of compassion. James 5.11 says the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. The God of creation is the God of comfort. In the midst of your storm, whether you're there right now or whether it's a future storm that you have yet to go through, remember this, God hasn't changed. He's still the same. He's still the same God who gave His Son for you. He's still the same God who allowed His Son to bear the wrath of your sin. He's the same God who's redeemed you and called you by name. He's the same God who's preparing for you a glorious future. He's sovereign and yet He's sympathetic. He's a God of compassion. Look back in our passage in verse 23. Paul said, For there stood by me this night the angel of God. In the midst of Paul's storm, in the midst of the darkest part of the night, God sent an angel to minister to Paul and to encourage him and to help him. Now God may not send an angel visibly to you, but the Bible says God has legions and legions of angels ministering spirits that attend to us and protect us and care for us. And God will be with you in your storm. He'll never leave you. He'll never abandon you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never give up. The last thing that Jesus said to His disciples before He ascended back into heaven was this. He says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And Jesus knew what He was talking about when He used that word forsake. To forsake means to turn your back on someone. And Jesus had experienced what it was like to be forsaken on the cross. Because when He was on the cross, His Father, with whom He had lived in perfect communion for all of eternity past, turned His back on the Son. And Jesus knew what it was like to be forsaken, to be cut off and abandoned by His Father. He did that for you. And so when Jesus uses this word, he knows exactly what he's talking about. Not just because he was God, but because he experienced it as a man. And he says, I will never turn my back on you. I will never forsake you. I am never gone from your life. In your crisis and in your pain, don't forget that God's real, that he cares for you, and that he's with you. So you know what you need to do when you're in the midst of the storm? Run to God. It might be easy to be mad at God. It might be easy to be angry at God. But even if you're feeling that way, just run to Him and tell Him. God, say, God, I, I want to be mad at you and I, I think you've been unfair and it seems like you've been unkind and I don't understand. But God, I believe you. Even though I'm having trouble feeling it. And so I'm running to you. Run to His arms and rest in Him. Psalm 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and He rescues those who are crushed in spirit. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in our time of trouble. God is real and He never changes. So in the middle of your storm, remember what Paul knew. That God never changes. Remember who God is. Number two, remember who you are. In the midst of your storm, don't forget who you are. Look at verse 23. Back in Acts 27. Paul said, There stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong. He says, I belong to God. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're a child of God. You need to remember that in the midst of your storm. Remember who you are. Never forget, I'm a child of God. If you know Jesus is your Savior, He is your Father in heaven, and you can experience His peace and His presence no matter what circumstances you're going through. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 and 4. 
I remember this passage well because the first time that I ever preached a sermon on a Sunday morning in a church, which is a very sort of intimidating thing, especially if you were like me who didn't have any public experience speaking growing up. And I had the opportunity, I, I, uh, the first church I served in was in Chincoteague, Virginia, on the Eastern Shore, which we have some Eastern Shore people here this week, which is exciting. And at the end of the summer, uh, I got to preach Sunday morning and Sunday night. And I only ever preached one time other than that in a church. And so I had, you know, I knew it was coming, so I had messages prepared. And, and on Saturday afternoon, I went over to the church to practice. All right? And so if you can just sort of picture me in an empty church up in the, up in the pulpit preaching to a bunch of empty seats. And as I worked on my messages, the one for Sunday night was fine, but the one for Sunday morning, I just couldn't get it out. It just wouldn't come out. And uh, I had to go. Some people had invited me over for dinner, and we're eating dinner, and they're like, oh, don't worry, you'll do fine tomorrow. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm preaching on tomorrow morning. And when you don't have any experience, that's a scary place to be in. And I went back to a uh, place where I was staying and spent some time in prayer, and God directed me to this passage. And I had studied it in a class, so I had some notes, and I put something together. And, and for whatever reason, God had me to share it that morning come to find out We had a visitor who visited quite unexpectedly who had just lost her grandson. And so it was a neat moment. So I remember these verses well. Isaiah says this, You keep him in perfect peace. Literally in Hebrew it just says, Peace, peace. Whose mind is stayed on you. Whose mind is fixed on you. Because he trusts in you. So trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord God is an everlasting God. Never forget who you are. Never forget that you're a child of God. Never forget that God's peace is available to you, that you can experience Him. Paul said, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And he knew all about it. Remember in Romans where he writes about how storms and problems and trials and difficulties, nothing can separate you from His love. And so just keep living. Keep remembering who you are. Keep trusting God in the midst of your storm. Number three, remember His promises. Remember His promises. In Acts 27, 25, He said, Men, keep up your courage, for I have faith in God. I believe God that it will happen just as He told me. Did you know that God's promises are true? That God, you know, I, I've made lots of promises in my life that I've, that I've not kept. I hope you don't think less of me. But I imagine that most of you, if not all of you, have broken a promise before. Most of you have had someone break a promise to you, haven't you? Whether it was mom or dad or a friend, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, somebody has broken a promise. And sometimes, because we've had promises broken so many times, we get a little jaded about promises, don't we? Do you know anybody that when they promise something, you don't even believe them anymore? Anybody know somebody like that? You know, sometimes we, we bring over that, that, those scars into our relationship with God. And we somehow think, maybe God's not going to come through. Maybe He doesn't keep His promises. But I want you to know that God is a God who always keeps His promises. He's faithful. He's never surprised at what happens. He's never perplexed. He's never confused. He never steps back and says, oh no, I didn't see this coming. He's sovereign. He sees the past. He sees the present. He sees the future. He's never out of control. He's on the throne. He's given us some promises. I want to just give you a few references. Because He's given us promises for right now. And these are just the tiniest of sampling of the promises. The Bible's filled with God's promises. But Jesus said, I'm with you. Matthew 28, 20. Always. Always. Always means always. All the time. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, Paul said this. He said, this is what God said to me. My perfect in weakness, therefore I will boast more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. God will give you power. He will give you strength to get through. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Jesus experienced life. He experienced hurt. He experienced pain. He experienced rejection. He experienced the death of those that He loved and cared about. In John chapter 11, it says that when Jesus saw the pain and the hurt that His dear friends Mary and Martha were experiencing over the death of their brother, even though He was going to raise them back to life, that He wept. 
because he knows our pain. He knows our weaknesses. He knows what it's like to be rejected. He knows what it's like to be made fun of. He knows what it's like to be mocked. He knows what it's like to be treated unjustly. So let us come with confidence, it says, and draw near the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. God has given you promises. So in the middle of your storm, run to the promises of God. Read them, claim them, pray them, trust them. It will help your mind become focused like Isaiah told us to. That we can experience God's peace. His peace is real. And His peace will strengthen you. He's given us promises for the future. And really, as we begin to wrap up our thoughts this morning, it's these promises for the future that give us such great hope in the midst of our trials. John 14, the night before Jesus dies, he says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions, are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you and that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. God is preparing a glorious future for every one of His children. We're going to live in His presence, in His light, and in His glory forever and ever and ever. 2 Corinthians 4.17 For this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. It's so important to keep the big picture in mind when you're in the middle of your storm. To realize that no matter how bad it is, ultimately it's temporary because there's coming a day when there'll be no more storms, no more pain, no more heartache, no more suffering. God is preparing a glorious future for His children. Jesus said, in this world, you'll have trials and tribulations. But you know what else He said in that verse? He said, to be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. And this world isn't all there is. The Lord's promises are pure. They're like silver, refined in a furnace, purified seven times over. You can trust the promises of God. Man born of woman is few days and full of trouble. You're going to face storms. You're going to go through problems. But listen, Psalm 61 verse 2 says this, From the ends of the earth, I will cry to you for help. For when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the towering rock of safety. Run to God in your storm. Remember who He is. Remember who you are. Remember His promises. To live for the glory of God, we need a faith that's capable of meeting and mastering the storms of life. Here's the thing. The tomb is empty. Jesus conquered death. We can trust Him. The grave is overwhelmed. The victory is already won. Would you bow your heads this morning? I know that, that some of you, even from just the testimonies that you've shared this week, are going through storms. And you've been through storms. And I know that storms are coming. And I want you to be able to live for the glory of God in those storms. And it's my heart and my prayer that you will develop such a faith, such a strong confidence in your God. That you'll be able to believe Him and not just believe in Him. That you'll be able to remember who He is in your storm and run to Him and trust Him. That you'll remember who you are. And that you'll remember His promises. That you'll cling to them and claim them and trust them. And I know that if you'll do those things, that God will get you through his, those storms. He'll never let go of you. He'll carry you. He'll hold you. He'll protect you. He'll see you through. And He'll use those storms to show you who He is, to accomplish His will and His purpose and His glory in your life and in this world. God will never waste the experiences you go through. You can trust Him. Father, I just pray for each person here this morning, for our students counselors, faculty. Father, we all go through storms. And so many times in life we feel overwhelmed. We feel hopeless. And Father, I pray in those moments that we would remember you and run to you and trust you. And that you would help us now to develop a faith that's capable of meeting and mastering the storms of life. Father, we love you. 
We thank you and we praise you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.